Let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the Sabbath and for the message that we have heard. And we ask, Lord, that we can apply it to our lives. We know that we do not always obey your voice. And um, we ask, Lord, that uh, you can continue to help us as we study, that your Holy Spirit can continue to speak to us, and that you can use us in these last days. Thank you for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning again. So um, thanks, Dwight, for that study. And we're continuing in this book by Olson, The Crisis Ahead. And um, we're on question number 15. Uh, what should our attitude, what should be our attitude today? How should we work and pray? Now, this is from Five Testimonies 714. We are not doing the will of God if we sit in quietude, doing nothing to preserve liberty of conscience. Fervent, effectual prayer should be ascending to heaven that this calamity may de be deferred until we can accomplish the work which has so long been neglected. Of course, that calamity is the end of the world, right? The Sunday law and all those things. Let there be most earnest prayer, and then let us work in harmony with our prayers. It may appear that Satan is triumphant and that truth is overborne with falsehood and error. Right. So we can have appearances of how things look. But God would have us recall his dealings with his people in the past. To save them from their enemies, he has always chosen extremities. When there seemed no possible chance for deliverance from Satan's workings for the manifestation of his power. Man's necessity is God's opportunity. So, so why does God bring us to extremities? Why does he do it that way? Extreme, extreme things in our lives. So well, he brings us to the end of our rope is the, the idea there. That's the way I think of it. Yeah. Before yeah. he seems to act, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. So, so why does he do it that way? It stretches what we oh, can handle. Sorry. Okay, Dana. Dana, what did you say? It stretches what we can handle. Okay, yeah. So, so he's tried wow. to fire. Tried yeah. to fire. Well, I think Gold of it. Yeah, yeah. So, like, go try to. So we go through trials. I mean, I think of it a little bit, um, you know, in the context of. Uh, uh, exercise and backpacking and things like that. When we go through extreme situations and, and push ourselves beyond what we think that we can do, we gain strength, right? I'm stronger. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. what, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. <laughs> What's that? What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, you know, so in the spiritual life, I mean, it's the same. God God tests our faith. He's developing a faith in us. And and so when we think about what's going to happen in the future, you know, the idea that we can just kind of sit and wait for the Sunday law to come along. We can't. Because when it does come, we will not be ready. So we have this act of work to do, which is first fervent effectual prayer right that the, that this calamity may be deferred until we can accomplish the work which has so long been neglected and then in a, in accordance with that prayer we need to to work so to say you know to god well put this off just so that you know i don't have to do anything i don't have to face it is different than to say god can you put this off so that we can get the job done right and I know, you know, our human nature is such that we we want we just want to deal with things later, right? Difficult things. But that's not why we want it delayed. We want it delayed because there are some difficult things that need to be done before those other difficult things. Right? So so there's a lot packed into that statement there. So this next statement from Review and Herald, December 24th, 1889. 
We should diligently study the word of God and pray in faith that God will restrain the powers of darkness. So again, the same idea. For as yet the message has gone to comparatively few and the world is to be lightened with its glory. The present truth, the commandments of God in the faith of Jesus, has not yet been sounded as it must be. We must take a firm stand that we will not reverence the first day of the week as the Sabbath. We have been looking at many years for a Sunday law to be enacted in our land. And now that the movement is right upon us. So this is 1888, right? The Blair Bill. Uh, we ask what are our people going to do in the matter? We should especially seek God for grace and power to be given to his people now. God lives, and we do not believe that the time has fully come when he would have our liberties restricted. The prophet saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Another angel, ascending from the east, cried to them, saying, Heard not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. This points out, the work we now have to do, which is to cry to God for the angels to hold the four winds until missionaries shall be sent to all parts of the world and shall have proclaimed the warning against disobeying the law of Jehovah. Now, if we think back to 1888, how many Adventists were there in 1888? Probably less than a thousand. Oh, no, in 1888, just, there was more yeah, than just a at the general uh, session. Well, the general conference session wasn't there just like a hundred and some people. There was a hundred, yes. Yeah, in 1888, the at the end of the year, the church membership was 26,112. Not not 144,000 yet. No. Okay. And and they were fairly limited. I mean, they had begun missionary work. Right. So, you know, that that, uh, you know, that had begun, but there was a lot of work still to do, obviously, according to Ellen White. The world needed to be warned. And, you know, when we look at our situation right now within this movement, of course, we have some advantages as far as um, uh, presenting the message to the world. We have the Internet and things like that. But there's also lots of other things to attract people's attention. And, and so obviously, if this work is going to be accomplished, um, God's going to have to take the work into his own hands. He's How he's going to do that, how the mo work is going to move forward, we don't know all the details. But we do know that we have to do the things that are put before us. And And, and so we have... In a sense, I mean, the four winds need to be held back. And then there's this work to do. So, you know, it's sometimes the work is sort of so overwhelming how much needs to be done. Okay, so just going to switch pages here. Okay, a vast responsibility is devolving upon men and women of prayer throughout the land to petition that God may sweep back this cloud of evil, and give a few more years of grace to work for the master. So that's December 11th, 1888, Review and Herald Extra. So, I mean, that did happen. Obviously, we've had a few more years since 1888. So the work has not been done, and God's calling upon us to do it. We see that those who are now keeping the commandments of God need to bestir themselves that they may obtain the special help which God alone can give them. They should work more earnestly to delay as long as possible the threatened calamity. If they do nothing to disabuse the minds of the people and through ignorance of the truth, our legislatures should abjure the principles of Protestantism and give countenance and support to the Roman fallacy, the spurious Sabbath. God will hold his people who have had great light responsible for their lack of diligence and faithfulness. But if the subject of religious legislation is judiciously and intelligently laid before the people, and they see that through Sunday enforcement to Roman apostasy will be reenacted by the Christian world, 
and that the tyranny of the past ages would be repeated, then whatever comes, we shall have done our duty. Let not the commandment keeping people of God be silent at this time, as though we gracefully accepted the situation. There is the prospect before us of waging a continuous war at the risk of imprisonment, of losing property and even life itself to defend the law of God, which is being made void by the laws of men. That's Review and Herald, January 1st, 1889. These are all sort of connected statements in that same period of time, dealing with the time, uh, 1888, 1889. I do hope that the trumpet will give a certain sound in regard to the Sunday law movement. I think that it would be best if our papers, if in our papers, the subject of the per perpetuity of the law of God were made a specialty. We should now be doing our very best to defeat this Sunday law. There are many who are at ease, who, as it were, as it were, asleep, they say, if prophecy is foretold the enforcement of Sunday observance, the law will surely be enacted. And having come to this conclusion, they sit down in calm expectation of the event, comforting themselves with the thought that God will protect his people in the day of trouble. But God will not save us if we make no effort to do the work he has committed to our charge. Those who have been warned of the events before them are not to sit in calm expectation of the coming storm comforting themselves that the Lord will shelter his faithful ones in the day of trouble. We are to be as men waiting for their Lord, not in idle expectancy, but in earnest work with unwavering faith. It is no time now to allow our minds to be engrossed with things of minor importance. The Sunday movement is now making its way in darkness. The leaders are concealing the true issue, and many who unite in the movement do not themselves see whither the undercurrent is tending. Its professions are mild and apparently Christian. But when it shall speak, it will reveal the spirit of the dragon. It is our duty to, to do all in our power to avert the threatened danger. We should endeavor to disarm prejudice by placing ourselves in a proper light before the people. We should bring before them the real question at issue thus interposing the effectual protest against measures to restrict liberty of conscience. We should search the scriptures and be able to give the reason for our faith. Patriarchs and prophets, Daniel and the Revelation, and the Great Controversy are needed now as never before. They should be widely circulated because the truths they emphasize will open many blind eyes. Many of our people have been blind to the importance of the very books that were most needed. Had tact and skill then been shown in the sale of these books, the Sunday Law Movement will not be where it is today. Now, so we know these books, um, you know, me and some friends of mine back in uh, the 80s, we, well, they organized it, David Darrell, um, you know, distributing some of these books, Great Controversy, Patriarchs and Prophets. They didn't have Daniel and Revelation by Smith, but, you know, uh, Steps to Christ, and Sire of Ages, and Ministry of Healing, um, you know, going door to door, distributing books. Now, we do live in a bit different world in relationship to books. You know, technologies have changed. Not a lot of people read books. Some people do. Um, so obviously we have the Internet as a way of getting the message to people. But I believe books are still important. Uh, there's something about a book compared to just, you know, getting a PDF on the computer. Those can sort of be buried and forgotten about. But a physical copy of a book uh, definitely has some advantages. And, um, you know, so we should all have some kind of book ministry where we give books to people. Um, now, sometimes the book, that person may not read them, but they could end up in a used bookstore and into somebody else's hands. So lots of times I see, especially in the past when we were doing all of that active door-to-door uh, -door work, uh, we would see these books show up in all the the, the used bookstores and the you know the used clothing stores where they have books. So so the books do get to people eventually, and people read them, and we we'll be surprised, or maybe we won't. Um, 
on how how effective the book ministry has been in reaching people. So it's definitely part of our labor is is distributing literature. I cannot labor to please men who will use their influence to repress religious religious liberty and to set in operation oppressive measures to lead or compel their fellow men to keep Sunday as the Sabbath. The first day of the week is not a day to be reverenced. It is a spurious Sabbath. And the members of the Lord's family cannot participate with men who exalt this day and violate the law of God by trampling upon his Sabbath. The people of God are not to vote to place such men in office. For when they do this, they are partakers with them of the sins which they commit while in office. So that's obviously a really good reason not to vote for anybody. Okay. So we're on chapter four, the universal Sunday law. Now, um, so when we talk about the universal Sunday law and the national Sunday law, uh, well, what's the difference? It's kind of a stupid. The universal, universal would be worldwide. National okay, would be so it's worldwide, and the national Sunday law is in the United States. But it, yeah. are there other differences besides that? So we, we're going to have a Sunday law in the United States. So the, the United States is going to be foremost in bringing this about, right? It's going to make an image to the beast. And the world is going to follow. So maybe as, as we look at this, we'll, we'll think about that question, you know, what's the difference between the national Sunday law and the universal Sunday law? Are they really just identical? The only difference is one is national, one's universal. Uh, obviously, there's a di different time in which they occur, right? Um, the national Sunday law is first, the universal Sunday law is later. Um, but there are also, what's that? Everybody, everybody will have to keep it, or else. Well, yeah. So, so there's the world in the United States. Yeah. So we would expect some. It, it's going to grow. It's going to become more intense as it progresses, right? One difference I would say would be that in the United States, it's going to be the nation, the people of the nation, mostly that would be clamoring for it. Yeah. While yeah. the other nations of the world, it will be forced upon them. Okay. That's... And your reason for that, for that conclusion? Is that what Ellen White says, particularly? Well, I just, uh, I can't see Muslims wanting to start worshipping on Sundays and so yeah, forth. I see other nations. Yeah. So, so in the United States, it comes more as a grassroots movement. And, but for some reason, that's going to move to a, uh, a worldwide movement that's going to bring it upon countries that maybe wouldn't be interested in it. So how that's going to happen exactly, I'm not certain. Okay. So, um, so what does the Bible say about the worldwide resurgence of Roman Catholic influence before the end of the world? Well, we know that the deadly wound is going to be healed. And um, we know that there's going to be an image to the beast, right? So that's Revelation 13. I saw one of the heads, as it were, wounded unto death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. That's 13 verse 3 and first 13 verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So they're going to worship this beast, right? And of course, then we have the image of the beast in chapter 13 as well. What favored nation will lead out in the enforcement of Sunday observance? Great Controversy 587. This very class put forth the claim that the fast spreading corruption is largely attributable to the desecration of the so-called Christian Sabbath and that the enforcement of Sunday observance would greatly improve the morals of society. This claim is especially urged in America, where the doctrine of the true Sabbath has been most widely preached. So, so obviously there's a fast spreading corruption. I mean, that is true in the United States. We see it everywhere. Um, and that's why, you know, a lot of people are saying what, what's happening in the U.S. now with Trump, that that's going to bring about the Sunday law. So that now definitely there are a group of people who would exactly um, exemplify this type of thinking, right? That they believe 
you know, there's all this corruption and part of it is a desecration of the so-called Christian Sabbath, right? Sunday. Uh, but we know that that's, that's not necessarily at this time a widespread belief. So something has to help have that happen, whether it's, it's, you know, and how, how many people think this and how it's going to come about, we don't know. But definitely there is kind of trigger. There should be some. What's that? That was going to be some, some kind of trigger, some kind of trigger. Yeah. So, so even worse corruption than we see now. I'm not sure, right? Like exactly the details, we don't know, right? I mean, we know things keep getting worse and worse and worse. At what point there becomes this tipping point where? You know, Sunday observance becomes a grassroots movement. I don't know. I don't know what that would take and how that's going to come about. But it says this claim is especially urged in America, where the doctrine of the true Sabbath has been most widely preached. So where Adventists have proclaimed the Sabbath, the true Sabbath. Four nations will follow the example of the Sabbath. As a such a right says temporal prosperity, so yeah, I know there's probably like to lose their prosperity somehow with the economy or whatever. Yeah, might, that's might sort of the that. idea um, that that something happens. So now she also talks about a civil war between the rich and the poor, and um, so one thing we could see is if you know things get very bad economic wise and in order for to sort of divert attention from a civil war where, you know, people are calling for a Sabbath, maybe that's, that's where it will begin. I don't know, but yeah, there's all kinds of speculations. I'm not a speculator. really. Uh, it says for foreign nations will follow the example of the United States, though she leads out yet the same crisis will come upon our people in all parts of the world. So we're all going to have to face, no matter where you live, you're going to have to face this Sunday law, uh, this test, right? How many nations will follow the example of the United States? As America, the land of religious liberty, shall unite with the papacy, enforcing the conscience and compelling men to honor the false Sabbath. The people of every country on the globe will be led to follow her example. Six Testimonies, page 18. She made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Revelation 14, verse 6 to 8. How is this done? By forcing men to accept a spurious Sabbath. The Sabbath question is to be the issue in the great final conflict in which all the world will act apart. Again, back to Six Testimonies, 352. Now, you know, some people have a really hard time with this, even Adventists. Um, they just kind of don't believe that it's going to be really the issue. Obviously, Parminder's movement doesn't think the Sabbath Sunday issue is going to be at all part of end time prophecy. This is just something for that time. If Christ had come back in that time, that's their theory. But really, we see that it must be the test and it has to be a religious test right can't be an environmental sunday law can't be a labor union sunday law i mean they may add those excuses to it as part of their motivations but the reason given here is that people believe that if they keep sunday they can restore uh, prosperity Right. So it has to be religious in nature. What one world religion in particular is concerned with enforcing Sunday observance. As the Sabbath has become the special point of controversy throughout Christendom and religious and secular authorities have combined to enforce the observance of Sunday, the persistent refusal of a small minority to yield to the popular demand will make them objects of universal execration. All Christendom will be divided into two great classes, those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus, and those who worship the beast and his image and receive his mark. 
What will happen to Seventh-day Adventists who cannot comply with the Sunday law? The decree enforcing the worship of this day is to go forth to all the world. Trial and persecution will come to all in obedience to the word of God. Refuse to worship this false Sabbath. The whole world is to be stirred with enmity against Seventh-day Adventists because they will not yield homage to the papacy by honoring Sunday, the institution of this anti-Christian power. It is the purpose of Satan to cause them to be blotted from the earth in order that his supremacy of the world may not be disputed. And the powers of earth, uniting in war against the commandments of God, will decree that all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, shall conform to the customs of the church by the observance of the false Sabbath. All who refuse compliance will be visited with civil penalties, and it will finally be declared that they are deserving of death. Now, when does the death decree occur? Right before Michael stands up. Okay, well, my understanding is the death decree happens after the close of probation. Now, yes. we know that there is going to be martyrs before that. And the question is, if that's the case, that the death decree is is um, going to be after the close of probation, and there's no martyrs after the close of probation, why will people be martyred? My understanding is uh, a death decree that occurs between the second and third plague. Uh, there's an my quotes. Uh, when she quotes the, the third plague, it's, um, this is their desire to spill blood, even though it wasn't enacted. It's by that uh, there's still the desire that they're going to get blood, which is yeah. relates to yeah. the third plague. Yeah. So, um, so it's in a sense, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a degree which is enacted, but it's God's people are protected at that time. Yeah, so we know yeah, so we know they're not gonna die after the close of probation. Well, what causes people to die before the close of probation as martyrs if there's no death decree? Just the people having a hatred for the message. Yeah, so so this would be more just an attacking of people, just something that's uh going on. Yeah, so we don't know the details of this, but it's just something to think about. What effect will the false revival have upon most nominal Christians? They declared that they had the truth, that miracles were among them, the great power and signs and wonders performed among them, were performed among them, and that was the temporal millennium that they had been expecting so long. The whole world was converted in harmony with the Sunday law. Letter 6, 1884. What two opposing marks will be received by the two groups of people in the world when Sunday keeping is enforced by law? Well, the observance of the false Sabbath in compliance with the law of the state, contrary to the fourth commandment, will be an avowal of allegiance to a power that is in opposition to God. The keeping of the true Sabbath in obedience to God's law is evidence of loyalty to the creator. While one class, by accepting the sign of submission, to earthly powers, receive the mark of the beast. The other, choosing the token of allegiance to divine authority, receive the seal of God. And that's why in 2020, we had a type of the Sunday law. It wasn't the Sunday law itself. It wasn't the test. You know, people didn't close their probations or lose their salvation. But we could see how the state could come in and people could be compelled to do something that they didn't really want to do, right? And it, it was quite a shock to see that happen. And and so we will see something similar again when it comes to the Sunday law. So that was, and I think part of it is that they were also seeing, because, you know, it's not about what it seemed it's about. There's There's something else behind it, that they have to enforce it. It didn't, it didn't benefit them really to enforce it, right? But definitely it did. They could see, can we use this power? Will it be accepted? Will people bow to our power? And they found that yes, people will. Fearful is the issue to which the world is to be brought. The powers of earth, uniting to war against the commandments of God, will decree that all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, 
shall conform to the customs of the church by the observance of the false Sabbath. All who refuse compliance will be visited with civil penalties, and it will finally be declared that they are deserving of death. On the other hand, the law of God in joining the Creator's rest day demands obedience and threatens wrath against all who transgress its precept. So we see this clash between the true and false Sabbath. With the issue thus clearly brought before him, whoever shall trample upon God's law to obey a human enactment receives the mark of the beast. So that's when people, that's when Sunday becomes the mark of the beast. What relationship does the universal Sunday law bear to the close of probation? So this should be a good question. God gives nations a certain time of probation. So obviously people and nations. With unerring accuracy, the infinite one show a still keeps an account with all nations while his mercy, mercy is tender with calls to repentance. This account will remain open. But when the figures reach a certain amount, which God has fixed, the ministry of his wrath commences. The account is closed. Divine patience ceases. There's no more pleading of mercy in their behalf. God keeps a record with the nations. The figures are swelling against them in the books of heaven. And when it, it shall have become a law that the transgression of the first day of the week shall be met with punishment, then their cup will be full. When the accumulated figures of heaven's record books shall mark the sum of transgression complete, wrath will come, unmixed with mercy. And then it will be seen what a tremendous thing it is to have worn out the divine patience. This crisis will be reached when the nation shall unite in making void God's law. The earth has almost reached the place where God will permit the destroyer to work his will upon it. The substitution of the laws of men for the law of God, the exaltation by merely human authority of Sunday in the place of the, of the Bible Sabbath is the last act in the drama. When this substitution becomes universal, God will reveal himself. He will arise in his majesty to shape terribly the earth. He will come out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the world for their iniquity. And the earth shall disclose, uncover her blood, and shall no more cover her slain. The substitution of the false for the true is the last act in the drama. When this substitution becomes universal, God will reveal himself. When the laws of men are exalted above the laws of God, when the powers of this earth try to force men to keep the first day of the week, know that the time has come for God to work. He will arise in his majesty and will shake terribly the earth. He will come out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the world for their iniquity. So we can see that, um, that the universal Sunday law is um, obviously the last act in the drama. There's lots of other uh, players in that act, but that's the test, the final test. So, um, so obviously there's going to be this progression of these, these Sunday laws. Do all Seventh-day Adventists believe that the universal Sunday law will be passed before probation close? Before probations close? No, they do not. Some students of the Bible and the spirit of prophecy expect the Sunday legislation will not become universal until some time after the close of probation. So, so there is, I guess, a, dis a dispute about that. <clears throat> the quotations listed under question eight above are interpreted in this way. Another supporting statement used is, when Jesus leaves the most holy, his restraining spirit is withdrawn from rulers and people. They are left to control, in the, to the control of e evil angels. Then such laws will be made by the counsel and direction of Satan that unless time should be very short, no flesh could be saved. So I guess here, what is the, what is the issue? Why? Now, I believe the death decree happens after the close of probation, so that even the universal Sunday law is progressive in its punishments. But, you know, I could be wrong. And any thoughts on this? So some have it after the close of probation. His restraining spirit is withdrawn from rulers and people. And so they're saying, well, that's going to be when now 
what would be the problem with this? Because what causes the close of probation? Hopefully I haven't put you all to sleep. Well, people have made their choice whether they're going to take the mark of the base on the seal of God. Right, so people have had to have made a choice. So to me, this Sunday law that happens after the close of probation, um, well, it's it's not even just a Sunday law. It's an anti-Sabbath law, right? So I, I mean, I think initially that Sunday laws won't be, you know, forcing people to work on Sabbath. So there's 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 more to it. So there's this hatred towards Seventh Day Adventists, and so that restraint that has occurred before the close of probation is going to be removed, as far as what's going to happen to God's people, right? Because unless time should be very short, no flesh could be saved. So nobody would be saved alive. But yeah, so people have to make their choice. So, I mean, if they haven't had a Sunday law test, then obviously they haven't made their choice yet. Right? So, so I would think that that would be a reason to say that the Sunday law becomes universal, but it increases after the close of probation. Okay, the little time of trouble before probation is closed. What has often been the lot of God's children in the past, right? So obviously we know some of these verses. You shall suffer tribulation, right? Um, we could look up Second Timothy 3, verse 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. John fifteen twenty. I think I know which one that is. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, then they will keep yours also. So there's a positive side there as well. So, so we can see that, you know, we, we understand this idea of persecution. And, and Satan, of course, persecutes Revelation 12, 13 and 17. That's when he's, persecuting the woman who fled, flees into the wilderness. And then what specific perplexities will Satan bring upon the saints in the future? In Revelation 13, which we're all familiar with, verse 15 and to 17. So we know about the image of the beast, that he, should, he has power to give life to the image of the beast. Um, and that is the, the first, the, the two-horned beast, right? And um, he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, to and free and brought bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. So we know about the mark of the beast that we cannot buy or sell unless we have that mark, the name of the beast or the number of his name. Right. So these are things that we're familiar with, obviously. Uh, when do these troubles begin in relation to the close of probation? I saw that God has his children who do not see and keep the Sabbath. They have not rejected the light upon it. And at the commencement of the time of trouble, we were filled with the Holy Ghost as we went forth and proclaimed the Sabbath more fully. Only read in 33. The commencement of the time of trouble here mentioned does not refer to the time when the plague shall begin to be poured out, but to a short period just before they are poured out. Or Christ is in the sanctuary, pretty writings 85. So, so we know that there is this time of trouble that's going to be, um, you know, Jacob's time of Jacob's trouble after the close of probation. But we have a time of trouble or a little time of trouble that occurs before the close of probation. What is one of the principal causes of this time of trouble? God's Sabbath will be trampled underfoot. And a false Sabbath will be exalted. In a Sunday law, there is possibility for great suffering to those who observe the seventh day. The working out of Satan's plans will bring persecution to the people of God, but the faithful servants of God need not fear the outcome of the conflict. Selected Messages 375. If popery or its principles shall again be legislated into power, the fires of persecution will be rekindled against those who will not sacrifice conscience 
and the truth in deference to popular errors is evil is on the point of realization, 5T712. Now, when we think about this, this time of trouble, um, popular errors, and again, you know, we can refer back to 20, 2021, 20, things that happened there, you know, we can say, well, you know, I didn't comply. Um, and some of us, of course, I didn't have a job that I had to comply. If I had to lose a job, you know, how would I have acted? I know some people who complied and regretted it. Um, so, um, and I know people who actually lost a job, not Adventists, but people who would not comply. A great economic cost to them. But of course, they're in better situation now. So, <clears throat> So obviously we know that this time of trouble, that there is going to be this persecution that's happening in with this conflict of the Sabbath Sunday issue. Will God's people be persecuted for Sunday breaking or for Sabbath keeping? So this is a good question. The Protestant world today see in the little company keeping the Sabbath a Mordecai in the gate. His character and conduct expressing reverence for the law of God are constant rebuke to those who have cast off the fear of the Lord and are trampling upon his Sabbath. The unwelcome intruder must by some means be put out of the way. So the fact that they're keeping the Sabbath is a rebuke. Righteousness lived out in a life can be a rebuke to the unrighteous. God's people will feel the hand of persecution because they keep holy the seventh day. So it's not just that they don't uh, or that they work on Sunday, you know, that they don't bow to the Sunday. But it really has to do with their Sabbath keeping. And so the persecution or the hatred towards them is is because of their their opposition to the Sunday and their proclamation and keeping of the Sabbath. Let there be a revival of the faith and power of the early church. And the spirit of persecution will be revived. And the fires of persecution will be rekindled how bitter will hatred of seventh day adventists become those who honor the bible sabbath will be denounced as enemies of law and order as breaking down the moral restraints of society causing anarchy and corruption and calling down the judgments of god upon the earth now one thing we know is that the media can really easily distort reality right things will be twisted words and actions misrepresented their conscious scruples will be pronounced obstinacy stubbornness and the contempt of authority they will be accused of disaffection toward the government ministers who deny the obligation of the divine law will present from the pulpit the duty of yielding obedience to the civil authorities as ordained of god in legislative halls and courts of justice Commandment keepers will be misrepresented and condemned. A false coloring will be given to their words. The worst construction will be put upon their motives. Now, I want you to think for a moment. So um, I don't know if we can remember that far back, um, you know, before 2020. In the past, who has who has been promoting uh, individual freedoms, freedom of speech, not, you know, not having censorship and all that. Which, which religious class, which uh, political class in the United States generally has stood more, um, for freedom? I would say the Republicans, uh, at this point. Really? Well, at this point, I'm saying in the past. Has it always been what it, how it is now? Can we remember what things used to be like? It used to be the opposite. It used to be the opposite, right. Now, we sometimes have forget this. Now, of course, there's certain aspects in which the Republicans, you know, have, you know, like, you know, right to bear arms and those types of things. Um, but definitely Republicans were much more prone to uh, talk about censorship in a good way as something that needed to be done. And the Democrats 
uh, would be much more inclined to speak against censorship and also to promote freedom of speech, right? Now, of course, part of what has happened is um, a redefining of terms and so forth. So there's a lot of, it's not as black and white as I'm saying. But one thing that we can see is that a group of people that at one time can profess something can actually change their minds and profess something quite different. So when we look at, you know, all of this talk about freedom of speech and and freedoms in the Constitution and so forth, in a class that now we would generally class as Republican, can we see that they could easily change when the situation changes? Yeah, very quickly. Yeah, you know, and, and it's something that's, you know, I mean, we think people are much more consistent than they are, but people tend to be following you know, their leaders, whoever that is, right? Whether it's, you know, thought leaders or whatever, 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 whichever direction this party spirit leads. Them. And um, so it'll be interesting to see exactly how these things unfold. I'm not saying that, you know, interesting is good, but things are going to happen in a way that we, we could be surprised if we're not familiar with the past. So so I could easily see people who now talk about, you know, freedom uh, being some of the worst oppressors. Before the warfare shall be ended and the victory won, we as a people are to experience trials similar to those of Paul. We shall encounter the same hardness of heart, the same cruel determination, the same unyielding hatred. Persecution will again be kindled against those who are true to God. Their motives will be impugned, their best efforts misinterpreted, their names cast out as evil. God will have his people prepared for the soon coming crisis. Prepared or unprepared, we must all meet it. What's SLP stand for? Sketches from the life of Paul, 251-252. There will come a time when because of our advocacy of Bible truth, we shall be treated as traitors. 6394. Wealth, genius, education will combine to cover them with contempt. Persecuting rulers, ministers, and church members will conspire against them. With voice and pen by boasts, threats, and ridicule, they will seek to overthrow their faith. What organizations will make it extremely difficult for Adventists to long continue their work in the cities? Well, we know what that is. The trade unions will be one of the agencies that will bring upon this earth a time of trouble such as not been since the world began. Second Selected Messages 142. And again on the same page. Because of these unions and confederacies, it will soon be very difficult for our institutions to carry on their work in the cities. My warning is, keep out of the cities. Build no san- sanitariums in the cities. And again, from the same page, a few men will combine to grasp all the means to be obtained in certain lines of business. Trade unions will be formed, and those who refuse to join these u- unions will be marked men. The time is fast coming when the controlling power of the labor unions will be very oppressive. Again and again, the Lord has instructed that our people are to take their families away from the cities into the country where they can raise their own provisions. For in the future, the problem of buying and selling will be a very serious one. As time progresses, what official decree will go forth concerning buying and selling? So we know, of course, this Sunday law in the last great conflict in the controversy with Satan. Those who are loyal to God will see every earthly support cut off because they refuse to break his law in obedience to earthly powers. They will be forbidden to buy or sell. Satan says, for fear of wanting food and clothing, they will join with the world in transgressing God's law. The earth will be holy under my dominion, says Satan, right? Hoarded wealth will soon be worthless. When the decree shall go forth that none shall buy or sell except they have the mark of the beast, very much means will be of no avail. 
God calls for us net for us now to do all in our power to send forth the warning to the world. The time is coming when we cannot sell at any price. The decree will soon go forth prohibiting men to buy or sell of any man except him that hath the mark of the beast. We came near having this realized in California a short time since, but this was only the threatening of the blowing of the four winds. As yet they are held by the four angels. We're not just ready. There is a work yet to be done, and then the angels will be bidden to let go, that the four winds may blow upon the earth. That will be a decisive time for God's children, a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. Now is our opportunity to work. What additional law will be enacted before the close of probation? Wonderful events are soon to open before the world. The end of all things is at hand. The time of trouble is about to come upon the people of God. Then it is that the decree will go forth, forbidding those who keep the Sabbath of the Lord to buy or sell and threatening them with punishment and even death if they do not observe the first day of the week. So, so there's punishment for keeping the Sabbath of the Lord and also punishment, even death, if they do not observe the first day of the, Sabbath, of the week as the Sabbath. At that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the ch- children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. So a- any thoughts about what we've been reading here? I mean, we all know about these things. Right? There's not, not anything new here. But but if we if we look at at how this Sunday law is going to come about, because this is a thing that we have struggled with. How does this come about? Um, I have had a discussion on one of my YouTube videos. You know, you know, this guy believes the Trump's going to bring in the Sunday law. Now he's not adamant about it. He just thinks, you know, that the timing looks right. And and definitely there are some things that look in that direction. But we don't even know if Trump's going to win. So we don't really know what's going to happen yet in the United States. I still think that um, part of these, the prosperity that's going to be taken away is is because of the civil war. So the civil war in the United States, the internal strife in the United States is going to be one of the motivating factors uh, to bring in the Sunday law. Now, Ellen White doesn't explicitly ever say that, right? She doesn't say there's going to be civil war in the United States that's going to cause the Sunday law. But she does talk about the rich and the poor. Right? So let me see. She also, she also talks about the civil war in relation to uh, the starvation in Italy. So it's it's more than just the U.S. Yeah. Yeah, I know I know what you're talking about. I'm trying to think how, how I understood that. See if I can find this statement. Can't find the statement. Yeah, I'm going to have to look that up. I want to. I mean, we need to look into the Civil War a bit more. Um, how Ellen White talks about it. Yeah, but she was talking. I know she talks about something about it in Italy, but I don't think that that's, from my recollection, that that is um, the cause of a civil war. Because um, there's, yeah. Anyway. We're going to have to look at that another time. A- any final thoughts before we close with prayer? Okay, well, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you again for the Sabbath and the fellowship we can have. Help us to think about these things, uh, to enter into your rest and enjoy the blessings of the Sabbath, but recognize that many other people need to know about the Sabbath and to receive the blessings that we have. They also need to know what's coming upon this world, and they need a relationship with you. So we ask that you can help us in bringing this about, that we can cooperate with you in this world, in spreading this message. Bless each person, watch over them, and um, may you bring us together again to study your word. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen.